last Sunday was Mother's Day. Really? Like, that was like forever ago, yeah? It was so long ago. I don't even know. It's hard to even fathom the last month, last Sunday was Mother's Day. This Sunday. <laughs> it's always Mother's Day. Um, well, we'll read Psalm 130 before we read it together this morning. <clears throat> our service today, your anointing, the Holy Spirit, your presence in us, with us, in our fellowship. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Right. You ready to worship God this morning? Yes. Amen. Yes. yes.
you're doing in our lives, what you've done in our lives, what you're going to do in our lives. Thank you. Thank you for turning our morning into dancing. Thank you for taking our ashes and making something beautiful. Thank you, God. We worship you this morning. There is nothing better than you. There is none like you.
ask that we are God, that we give thanks to Him, even for the things we haven't seen yet. And that's faith. Faith pleases our Lord. And we have the confidence that He will be able to do it. And if He does, we sing praise His name. Amen. And that's a powerful name.
What a beautiful thing. Jesus. You can just praise God. Church. Good morning. Good morning. Let me have uh, Pastor King give us an introduction. Right. So just let's, let's give him a hand. Genesis chapter 2, we get down to the seventh verse, and the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. I'm going to stop there. There's a lot more that could be read, and ask Pastor Danny to come up. And um, how many of you know Pastor Danny has a mother? Some of you aren't sure. We all got a mother somewhere. <laughs> That's how it all happens. Let's, let's back up to Genesis chapter 1. Let's do a refresher course on that. <laughs> we all got here. Now, how many of you know that Pastor Danny has a sister? How many of you know I've got eight? You got eight. <laughs> Pastor Danny's sister is a twin. I am going to play the sister. What's <laughs> <laughs> your name? I always said my sister was better than me. Well, <laughs> well. <laughs> I feel like that. Oh. Oh. No, I can go on that. That's cool. Okay, now, she's a twin. She is a twin. Hold up your hand. See how much twins we are? If you walk by sight, you'd have to say we look nothing alike. And if you ran our fingerprints, you would see that we have no match. There is no match. From the top of his head to the soles of his feet, 
there are 14 trillion microbes. And those microbes are individualized also. His won't match mine, mine won't match his, even though we're twins. Uh -huh. It's not a match. We are individually, fearfully, and wonderfully, and uniquely made. You are you. And if at times you think people don't understand you, it's because they're not you, and no way that they could, even if they're your parents. Because truth be known, the whole head is sick, and the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked, and who can know it? It cannot be known except by the one who formed it in your mother's womb. Thank you. So that brings us to an important chapter in the book of Psalms, 139, please. Psalms 139. In the book of Psalms, we're going to see something in chapter 139. There's so much to be seen that it's really a case of abbreviating what we uh, look at for the sake of not overwhelming our capacity. But in Psalm 139 and verse 16. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being imperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which is continuous, which in continuous were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. I wanted to just hit briefly on the thought of grace promotions. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And we have all these spheres out there that he created. And if you've ever seen any satellite pictures of the earth, you see that we're the blue green one. And everything else is pretty dark and pretty void of anything that's terribly dark. I don't know what the big rush to get to Mars is. Have you seen a picture? <laughs> Nothing there for me that I can see anyway. And so I'm not rushing off to see it. And so the earth being designed as it has been designed by God from the beginning is what I call a grace promotion. It was dark and void and no better than the moon and no better than Mars and Mercury and Venus or any of the other places until it found grace in the sight of God according to a plan that God had. And by grace he fashioned it. Prior to all this, he fashioned the angels. That was a grace promotion for them. They didn't exist before he caused their existence. And so that was the power of God being displayed in the heavens. And so now we got the earth, and the earth is uniquely special because he was able to scoop up some sand or dirt and make a man. Make a man with 14 trillion microbes, different than anybody else's. You all get the 14, but yours are not like mine, nor mine exactly like yours. There are four trillion from the neck to the top of your head, microbes. And every last one of us has a different imprint. That's why I like to hold my hands up in church service. So God can take note that I'm here and I'm not Pastor Danny Swim. No, I'm here. It's me. No one else has this imprint. And I show it so the angel taking, taking note of who came would have no trouble giving my name correct. And so we find this grace promotion. Eve is going to come upon the scene. He comes upon the scene, born out of the ribs bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. That was a grace promotion. She didn't have to start with dirt. She started with something that God had already initiated, and it was just a continuance 
I'm continuing what I'm doing. I've written it all down in a book. Before anybody got here, before you and I got here, there was a referring to the book. And everything that was in the book about how much you would get of this, that, and the other thing necessary, and the things that are just pure blessing, are in the book. And when we had no form in the mother's womb, and we had no bones yet, they were following the construction already recorded in the book. No mistakes. Every bone where it belonged, according to what was written beforehand before the foundation of the world. It's another way of God saying, I am in charge. I am in charge. I am completely in charge. You are not an accident. You are not a happenstance. You are not an involvement in evolution. You are designed. And to prove that I know what I'm saying is true, I've written it all in a book. You'll be able to see that when the books are open. When the books are open, you find that you are there and with great specificity he has put our names down and that is grace. I was thinking about our Christianity. You got some men working, fishing and Jesus comes upon the scene and says, follow me. That's a great promotion. I'm going to make you fishers of men. That's an upgrade on what you've been doing. A huge upgrade on what you've been doing. I mean, you've been doing these things, like other people do these things, but now you're going to do something brand spanking new, created by me, and established by me, and promoted by me, and empowered by me, and directed by me. And so they became followers, and as followers, disciples. But then there was another great promotion. After they had followed by, as disciples, they became servants. You've followed as a disciple sufficient time now, you can begin service. And have that service be true to my instruction, have that service be true to my counsel, have that service be true to my word. They went on as servants for a season, and then there was another grace promotion. I no longer call you servants. We're upgrading again. You're my friends. You're my friends. And the last promotion is that of wife. It's in Revelation 19, verse 9. <coughs> And kings of the earth have committed fornication. I don't want to be sure. I don't want verse 9. It's a good verse, but I don't want it. I want the verse that says the wife had made herself ready. Well, you're never going to find it in 18 if you wanted it in yeah. 19. <laughs> 19 was perfectly fine. I would get messed up with the with my little marker in the Bible. Sometimes you need to check those things. Okay, verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. She comes through the door. If you've ever been to a church wedding, you know that the, the bride comes through the door, and she's coming down the aisle as the bride. But you'll also notice that at the conclusion of the service, he said, now by the third <coughs> invest in me, I present to you, husband and wife, the final promotion is to reach that place. And that is a wonderful place. The bride, I was the bride, I was promised to him. I was betrothed to him. And now I'm presented, and that presenting is the uh, inner seat where the robes that had some spots on them, remember? There's spots in your love feast. The robes that had some spots in them and wrinkles perhaps are removed at the beam seat. And now we are at the 
altar of the Father being given to the Son, blameless, holy, without spot, without wrinkle, forever. And all of this is just a continuance insofar as the believer is concerned. You're born again, and then in continuance, you're baptized, and then in continuance, you are taught, and then in continuance, you serve, and then in continuance, he declares your friend. Very few make it to friend, unfortunately. They're born again, they'll be there. But a friend is an interesting place to be. And a wife, even a promotion over that. I hope you married your best friend. I hope they're still your friend. I hope that at the very worst, at your house, it's never any less than friendly. That the conversation were it to be heard from a fly on the wall, would it be a friendly conversation each and every time the one opens his mouth towards the other. I hope that's all that ever, that, that that's the least and that's the worst. I made a commitment to always be polite. Pass the sugar, please. Sometimes it was a little rough. <laughs> but it was always polite. It was always carefully chosen words to, uh, to make sure that I maintained that privilege of, of friend. Pastor Drew has been a friend since I met him. He's mature enough to know what that constitutes. And I return it as best I am able. I'm praying that that will be on, in continuance also. Mm -hmm. That we will continue all the days of our life till we're standing before him. Mm -hmm. That we could say that one another. That if you were given the microphone, as it were, and said, I want you to introduce this one beside you, you can say, Lord, this was my friend. He was my friend. Well, thank you for being my friend. And I attempt to return the friendliness by knowing if you've got a mother or not and how she's doing. Knowing if you've got a brother or sister or not and how they're doing. Knowing the one in this room who seems to me to be the most unlike me. How could they be like me? We were individually, secretly made. Don't you love that? That God formed us in secret. It's nobody's business what I'm doing here. You wait till you see the finished product. Isn't that an exciting part about uh, pregnancy, waiting to see the butt drop. Yeah, I don't want that little picture on the screen in a circle that looks like a 1957 television. I want to see the, I want to see the final product. I want continuance. Jane said he was hoping that because of all my health concerns along the way that I live to see him graduate. So I may be departing soon because He's graduated. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta send me a marker a little bit. I'll send for continuance. So he's, he's gonna go on to these doctors, so that gives me maybe six more years. <laughs> but anyway, Father, we thank you for the privilege of continuance. And we ask that you bless to that end for your glory. Amen. Amen.
smile and a chuckle. That's good. That's good. That's good. In that case, uh, hopefully by the end to improve on that condition. <laughs> but I don't know how I can improve on thumbs up and excellent as fast as you can. I think it just sitting down. Attenuates. Attenuates. says in verse 15 of Matthew 18 it says <coughs> moreover if thy brethren shall trespass against you go and tell him his fault between you and the Lord alone and if he hear you you can be done but if he not hear you then take with you one or two more of that and in your mouth Two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So, uh, like by law, if you have someone who's done something against you, and then, like in your heart, you're like, well, you know, maybe he really didn't mean to. So, then you kind of, like in your heart, you're, you're imputing innocence, like in your heart, because I love my brother, and maybe he really didn't mean to. So, I go to him alone, and I ask him about an opportunity to clear the air between you two and then go and talk to them. And then maybe it's just nothing. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. You know. But maybe there is something that really there that he's like, well, you and then this and then I really and I still have a problem. And then he says, well, take, you know, someone, two or three with you and it may be established. Like, you know, you come back with some other guys and you just talk to them like, you know, this is not right. And if you neglect to hear them, tell them to the church, but if you neglect to hear the church, let them be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. Verily I say unto you, whoso, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if two or three of you agree on earth as touching anything, it shall be asked done for them and my Father which is in heaven. For two or three are gathered together in my name. Where am I in the midst? So it's 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 like before the war. Like there's this there's this fault versus between two people. And then you you he brought two more with him or just so it can be like a witness thing. And it actually is kind of bringing the Lord into the situation. Where it's not just like you know when it's like so, like, when it's just two people and they have, like, a little spat, it can kind of get ugly. But if there's more people, like, it can kind of be a little more reserved because the Lord's there. And there's more people involved. So, we bring the Lord in our relationships. And he's, he's there. Then comes Peter, verse 21. And he said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Seven times. So, he has a pretty good question. He asks them, well, Lord, you're talking about, like, okay, so if my brother does this to me, and, uh, you know, I do this, and then I follow what you say to me, so how often, though, until, like, you know, I can just write him off? That was a good question, right? You know, Lord, how often, how many times do I have to do this? You know, you know, forgive him seven times, you know, so, you know by law, it, had, it was three times. Peter is like, well, I know Jesus is pretty gracious, so let's, let's up the number a little bit. Let's go seven times. So, seven times, Lord, and, and like, let's, let's think of this in a way. Um, I have a friend, he's a brother, and he does something to me, right? And then, just, you know, as it is, I forgive him, right? And then, like, you know, he does the same thing to me. I'm like, okay, well, anybody makes mistakes, and maybe, you know, for God, you know, because we had this, we had this problem before, this issue before, and then I'm like, oh, well, yeah, okay, I forget him. Then he does it a third time. And I'm like, hmm. so, 
something, something like something's going on like a third time. Like if we just you remember like last week and this whole thing and the third time and you know you need to start to wonder like is he trying to like get over on me? Because we get this way, we get suspicious. <coughs> That's how Adam is, he gets suspicious in his mind. And then uh, and I like I forgive him reluctantly and I'm just thinking about it. And then a fourth time, and I'm like, okay, like, this is like, like, I don't know. And then it just gets worse from here. When we address it that way, right? Like, um, Adam, or our natural man, is very good at counting or keeping account of things, aren't we? When we get in arguments, I got a thumbs up, okay. When we get in arguments with each other, you know how we can get very historical? <laughs> uh, like, you know, 2006, you said this to me. On this day, at this time, when you did this. Or, you know, or maybe it's more recent. Last night, I don't know how good our memories are. You know, mine can be bad, but at times it can be very good. You know, last week you said this to me. My wife's like, no, I didn't. <laughs> she, she remembers for me no it didn't happen that way okay maybe it didn't happen that way like you know we get very historical because we just you know it's just in there we, we actually keep little log books very accurately and they come out actually and they do and it's in the natural man because God doesn't remember our sins or iniquities anymore under the new covenant he doesn't so we keep these little log books and then Peter has a good question for you, Lord. Okay, well, um, you know, how often my brother sin against me, I forgive him, seven times. Jesus said unto you, said, uh, I said not unto you seven times, but seventy times said, okay, so 490 times, okay, okay. <laughs> it's about, you know, but 70 times seven is to illustrate, like, just, we always forgive. Because with Christ, it's not a number thing, is it? Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, how often, Lord? Well, well, you've messed up in this area about 32 times, so yeah. cut off 34. Or, you know, how often, Lord? It's, I'm so happy you didn't give us, like, a real number, like, because then, you know, we're like, oh, okay. Because then we would start, like, you know, Hey, the sun. We would start like, you know, you know, numbers. Right? Like he didn't give a number because there isn't a number. And he's communicating this to Peter because of what? Like he it'd be one thing to tell Peter it, like I'm gonna tell Peter, okay, so you you live this way. But why is he telling Peter to like this is how it is? Because this is how he is, isn't it? Like he's telling Peter, this is how it is, because this is how I am. This is how I am with you, Peter. And test me. And Peter did do that <laughs> quite a bit. Like, test me, Peter. Like, you'll find out. Like, this is how I am, Peter. And then he illustrates it with this parable. Now, this is interesting. 70 times 7. Therefore, not but. He says, therefore. Like, if he said, but, it would be an amendment to the 70 times 7. But he says, therefore, as an illustration. He, you know, it'd be, I forgive always, but, and then he gets, but it says, therefore. So it's an explanation of what he means. Therefore, is the kingdom of heaven like unto a certain king, which takes account of his servants. And when he begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. <laughs> like how do you like you borrowed that much money like <laughs> like this guy has got like houses and like but like what did he do with it like so look like he borrowed that much money and he had not to pay like his Lord commanded him to be like he borrowed 10,000 talents like <laughs> for as much as he had nothing to pay his Lord he told commanded him to be sold and his wife and his children and <laughs> he had to pay what he made. So he borrowed this huge amount of money and what did he do with it? Like this is like humorous. Like he borrowed this amazing, like what did he do? Go gambling, go on vacation, buy a car. Like he has no assets to pay back his Lord with the money that he bought. 
Like, what did he do with the 10,000 talents that he, like, I'm just, this is, like, funny. Like, you borrowed, like, you know, usually when you borrow money, you invest it or you think, like, okay, this guy borrowed, like, millions of dollars, and then he wasted it all. <laughs> like, what did, you have no assets, really? Like, you didn't, like, buy land, you didn't buy a car, you didn't buy a house, you like, I don't know, it just disappeared. I don't know, it just flew away. I went on vacation, went to Tahiti with my family, my wife and kids, we went jet skiing. Here, I got the picture, this is what we did with it. This is what we did, it was great, fantastic family vacation. I bought a new truck, but then I had an accident, and then, you know, but then I bought the internet, it was great, this is what, I can't pay you back at home, so. What did you do? I got, you know, I got nothing to pay, I got a huge debt. I wasted it, and then he said, well, you gotta pay me back. And he couldn't pay me back. Wife and children, all that he had, payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down, worshiped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, I'll pay you all. Now, look at it. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, loosed him, and forgave him the debt. Like he didn't even really hear what the servant asked. Right? So the servant said, okay, oh, no, no, just, 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 you know, I'll pay you back. Like, you know, I'll pay you back. <coughs> like, just, just be patient with me, okay? I can, I, can, I, can, I can do it. I'll pay you back. I'll do it. I'll pay you back, Lord. Be patient with me. You know, like, you know, I, okay, this is, this is like the day. This is accounting. I'll pay you back. And then the Lord just, you know, the servants move with compassion. Like, you know, I don't even want you to pay me back. Loose them. And, uh, Forgive him the debt. Like he didn't even like he had this immune, you know, pay it, pay day, come on, pay me back. Now, if this guy was a businessman, if he was a numbers guy, he would say, okay, with interest, you're gonna be paying me back for the rest of your life, basically. Right? But this was not how he was. He swore, like, you know, please, I'll, I'll pay you back, I promise, I'll do it, I'll work hard. Me and my wife, my kids will put in the hours and pay you back. And then he's like, you know what, just forgive me. Just, you know, I don't I don't even I don't even want to just go. Just go. Okay. Wow, like, woo! Hop skipping it, like, you know. <laughs> you know, woo! Woo! Yeah, you know, run out, woo! -hoo! You know, you know, they imagine the doom and the gloom of having to pay back that for the rest of your life, and then woo! -hoo! I'm out, baby, woo! -hoo! Yeah, but he, like, like that would have been the happy ending to the story, right? But like, mm -hmm. that's not what happened. Like you know, I would say, like, woo, happily ever after. But wow, the same servant. Like here we got okay, and then we'll, like verse twenty four, twenty five. We got the numbers right, and then verse twenty six, twenty seven. There's a relationship between. The Lord and that servant. He wants it. Like, the only way he can have a good relationship is if you forgave him the debt. The only way, like, I don't want you to pay it back. You, like, you can't pay it back. I don't even want you to. You don't, you know, I don't want you to. I want a relationship <clears throat> of compassion. And then he just lets him go. And then the same servant, Mr. Numbers, same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred, hundred pennies, right, you know, owed him a dollar. He owed me a dollar, laid hands on him, took him by the throat, you know, <laughs> pay me what you owe me, you know, pay me what you owe me, his fellow servant, no, what, you know, just, you know, just wait, man. The fellow servant fell down at his feet beside him, saying, have patience with me, I'll, I'll pay you everything. And he would not. Wow. Went out, threw him in prison. So he should pay the debt. Like, you know, I'll pay you, dude. It's, it's you know, I, I just don't have it on me. I'll pay you. Don't worry. It's, you know, small dude. I can do it. And he would not. He would not. Wow. Mr. Numbers comes back again. Um, verse 31. So when the fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry. 
called unto their Lord by the word of God. And his Lord, after that he had called them, said unto them, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt. All of it. Because just because you asked me to. Like, if the servant didn't even ask him to forgive him, but just because he wished he did. Like, because you asked me to. I forgave you that whole thing. Should not thou also have compassion on your fellow servant, even as I had pity on you? Thanks. Oh, Lord. And his Lord was angry with him, and delivered him into the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my Father in heaven do unto you. So, like, because of Jesus Christ, like, we're forgiven as believers, like, we're forgiven judicially, right? We're forgiven, right? Jesus Christ, redemption through his blood, attained eternal redemption for us by his blood. Ephesians 1, 7, Colossians 1, 14. Redemption and forgiveness of sins by the riches of his grace. Like, judicially, like, that's, I am forgiven in Jesus Christ. And yet, here we read also, So likewise shall my Father have do unto you, if you from your hearts forgive not every one of his brothers their trespasses. Like, where does God want to deal with this? Like, he um, wants to deal with this in our hearts, doesn't he? Like, he wants to deal with us in our, in our hearts, doesn't he? <clears throat> from your hearts. Like, like I'm afraid that like people like walk around like with little heart prisons uh, toward each other, because he says you're not getting out until you pay all that was due. So likewise, shall my Father in heaven do unto you if you from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Like it's an amazing thing. Like forgiveness is so beautiful. Skip and jump, right? I go out from the presence of the king with the with like burden gone. I'm wow, woo, right? And then like, but then to like Pastor King said, continuance in that, right? Like, like I like this huge thing. Forgive me, God Almighty. I like no, I could never pay. Like, I could work my whole life and never pay it. Like, ever. Ever. Like, you know, like, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about how much, okay, I make this much a year. If I work hard, maybe I can make this much a year. And then, like, you know, I, I really have to, maybe I can take on extra work and, you know, maybe my wife can work, the kids can do it. And then maybe, then, like, maybe over, like, you know, 35, 40 years, maybe, maybe, like, if we're tight, Budgeting 35, 40 years if we're tight. Like, you know, keep my keep my family out of prison, just take care, you know, if we're tight and budgeting and we were really like every, you know, then we could like really like then I could really like pay them back and then I would be free of this debt <coughs> clean and clear. Like I, it would never happen again. And I just gotta be really tight. And, you know, just can't make a mistake, can't go on vacations, can't buy can't buy Ferraris anymore. I gotta stick with the right, you know, the little you know, Honda City or like Ford Focus, a family car, that's it. We're not going, we're not going big. And then we're just gonna, we're gonna really do it. And like you thinking that, and then God just says, oh, you know what, you know, just, I love you, you know. Jesus Christ paid for it, you know, you go free. And like, you know, you know like, I, I, I like, you know, like mortgages, like you got 15, you got 10 year mortgages, 15 year mortgages, 20, 30, you know, it depends on your bank. You get a 50 year mortgage. And it's like, I stare at that number sometimes and I'm like, for this many years, I'm going to be paying for this. Uh, like, 
you know, it's it's just, you know, how we are. So I'm thinking, like, so when I'm this old, I'm going to be debt free. Whoa! I'm going to be so happy, right? Like, whoa! Finally, yeah! yeah. Has anybody here ever paid off their mortgage? And did that have, okay, we got we got one mortgage paid. Oh, you guys paid off the mortgage? Day It's great, isn't it? What? You went right back. <laughs> and then that's how it happened. I paid it off. I mean, it's like, I mean, if we are going to be numbers people, we're just going to be accumulating debt again and again and again and again and again and again. If it's going to be like this, if it's going to be, okay, Lord, I'll pay you back, it's going to be again and 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 again. Right? But that's not how he wants it to be, is it? Like, he doesn't want it to be the bean-counting number system. He wants this relation with us, doesn't he? And he calls the servant wicked, no less. He calls the servant wicked for doing the counting, right? Like, I forgave you this huge debt, and you went to one of your fellow servants, you, and, like, and you couldn't, like, you couldn't? Like, you couldn't do that? Like, I dealt with my son yesterday. Like, uh, my grandma gave him a four wheeler ride. And, uh, like, it was fun. Like, he loves, you know, having a four wheeler. And then he got back. Okay, tell your grandma, thank you. Tell your grandma, thank you. You know, she took, you know, took time and everything. Good. No. <laughs> and I made him sit down for half an hour. You're going to sit there until you tell grandma, thank you. <laughs> Sat there, and then Grandma came up. And you tell Grandma, thank you. Finally, told Grandma, thank you. Yeah, there we go. It was great, you know. <laughs> after 30, 30 minutes and a slot to the beehive, like, and then like, because in my heart, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah, like she just, you know, I just say thank you, like really, just thank you, you wicked. How? Where did you? Who's your? Who are your parents? You <laughs> wicked. Your mother, I, your son, honey, your son. I, look what your son did. He didn't learn that from me. Your son. And then, you know, it's just, you know, we always blame, like, when the kid does sound bad, you always blame the other one, right? <laughs> your, your, look what your son did. Oh, you know. It's just, you know, just a fun thing. But, like, you know, just in a, in a simple thing, but, like, you imagine, like, this huge, like, God, uh, like, forgave us. Like, 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 you know, huge, like, like, you know, doesn't deal with us according to our sins. He just forgives us. And then he says, like this, like just a little, little, little trespass against a fault, like a little fault, little, little, little dead. And that, I mean, that's, that's how the natural man is, though, isn't he? He's a bean counter. He's a numbers man. He, he's a, he's a, how many times, Lord? Seven times? Okay, seven times I can do that. That's how he is. And then here God comes in with this huge movement of forgiveness on the natural man's heart and he can't contain it because he's like this guy, isn't he? And that's me also without Christ, without fellowship with Christ. That's me. That's my little, my little wickedness, my little, because I can be a bean counter too. I can be a numbers man too. I'm just, just hold it, you know. Get historical when I get in a fight with somebody. Oh yeah, well, and then they're like, oh yeah, well you, no, 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 you think you're Mr. Perfect. My numbers are bigger than your numbers. No, your numbers are this number. My numbers. You know, and then he, but then he says, so likewise shall man be father do unto you. From your hearts, forgive not every everyone his brother his trespasses. Like the sad thing is, we listen to warnings much more than blessings, don't we? I mean, that's just how we are. Okay, well, what happens if I don't do it? Here's the penalty. Why don't you speed on the highway? Because Mr. Policeman out there with his radar. <laughs> What's the blessing of not speeding? Uh, you know. No, it's because Mr. Policeman, now with his radar, that's the only reason I'm not speeding. 
because it's such a beautiful highway, you know. Like, this is how we are. Like, we, we are we're geared to listen more toward warnings than blessings. Like, the blessing of forgiveness is I go skipping around with joy and love in my heart. That's the blessing of it. Like, the blessing of it is my free relationship I can have with people any day of my life. That's the blessing of it. I can have this beautiful love, compassion, relationship like the king desired to have with the servant. And he had it. And then, you know, he did it. Because ultimately, the guy didn't want it. Like, you read what the servant said. The servant didn't want the relationship with the guy, did he? He said, what did he say? Have patience with me. I'll pay you everything. He didn't want it. He didn't want that relationship with him. It was too hard. <clears throat> it was too hard. For him to deal that way. And, but it would be the better of the options, don't you think? Right? To live in forgiveness freely with God, isn't that the better of the options than paying it back? I would think so. But he didn't want it, did he? He didn't want it at all. And then we see him play it out with his fellow brother. And then actually, guess what? He got what he wanted. Because so will, as it says, your heavenly Father do unto you. If you from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother. Oh, this is fascinating. Like, it's, it's like tough. Um, in Ephesians 4.32 it says this. says, uh, yeah, the whole really context is talking about communication. Verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Uh, corrupt is anything generated from the flesh, from the natural man. Like, like there's communication that God, there's godly communication. And then there's the corruption of godly communication. Proceed out of your mouth, that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Like, you know, when someone tells you something like good and edifying, it's so easy to receive, right? And it's like, wow, like, thank you. Like, uh, you know, some of you remember Sean Ryan? He, he, he was texting me last night uh, out of the blue, that was very weird. Like, he was just texting me saying, hey, you know, I meant to tell you at the wedding, like, you know, like, like, I remember something you said, and it was, like, very great, and it touched our hearts, and I'm like, really? Like, you know, so many years ago, I'm like, really? Yeah, I just wanted, never told you, I just wanted to text you that one. So this morning, I'm reading that, I'm like, wow, like, that's, like, godly communication. Thank you. Like, that's very, thank you for telling me that. Like, wow, thank you. Like, that was cool. And grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby you are sealed into the day of redemption. You know, our, it's our communication that does that. Like, to each other. Like, once you get done tearing in to each other, like, you feel, like, fantastic about that, you know? Like, because the Holy Spirit is grieved by our communication. And it, it's like this little, like, you think you wounded your spouse, it's actually you're wounding the Holy Spirit. Whereby you're sealed unto the day of redemption. He makes that promise, just in case you're confused. Like, the Holy Spirit's forever with me, but it is possible to wound him because he's a person. Like, our communication. And let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind in communication one to another. Tender heart, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Like, why did God forgive us? Was it for my sake? Did I, did I, well, what's the word? Did I, merit it? Is that the word? Did I pay for it? Or did I, did I, like the servant, did I pay off my debt? I didn't, right? Like, why does, why does Christ forgive? Like, why does God forgive me? It's for Christ's sake. It's not because I'm, a, it's not because I'm just some superior human being. It's not, like, because I deserve it. 
It's not because I'm walking better than any other human being on the face of earth. It's not because I'm less vain than anybody else. For Christ's sake. Like Christ's sake, I'm forgiven. For Christ's sake. And because it's for Christ's sake, then it's always available to me. Isn't it? Now look at that same provision, he says. Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. The same provision, God, the same provision of forgiveness God exercised towards me for Christ's sake. He says, use that for others. That same provision that I exercise toward you for Christ's sake, that's where it's going to come from. You say, well, I, I can't forgive this guy. Well, of course you can't. It's, it's him through you that's got to do it. Like, the only reason I can't forgive this guy is because I'm not operating in that provision for forgiveness. Because my forgiveness is very conditional. My forgiveness, my provision for forgiveness runs out very quickly, I can tell you that. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm less than Peter, I'm two times a day. I'm two times a day, Dave. Like, you know, one time, okay, two times, are you kidding me? Uh, like, I'm two times a day, right? But that, but if my provision for forgiveness is that, then it comes out easy, doesn't it? Then it comes, even as Christ forgave you, so all, even as God for Christ's sake forgave you, so also forgive them. That's where my forgiveness toward brethren come from. It's not generated in me because I'm like that wicked servant. I want payment. I'm not going to forgive you until you say you're sorry. Payment. I'm not going to forgive you until you make it right. Payment. I'm not going to forgive you until you look pitiful. Payment. I'm not going to forgive you till tomorrow. Payment. Right? Payment. That's us. Payment. Oh, what great believers we are, right? Forgiving one another after four days of ignoring them. I forgive you. <laughs> payment. You paid for that. I ignored you for five, five days. Seven days. <laughs> right? Even as God, for Christ's sake, payment for forgiveness. Forgive you so also. Forgive you, right? Like, that's my provision in marriage, in relationships, friendships, everywhere, in communication. Where, where, like, how? I'm looking at myself, taking account. I don't got it. How? It's right there. So, uh, the song we read at the beginning of, uh, of, of the church service uh, there's forgiveness with you. Oh, no, it first says, if you would mark iniquity, who can stand? Verse 3 of Psalm 130. And then he says, well, there's forgiveness with you, that you may be clear. Yeah. Like, if you marked iniquity, God, you did <laughs> kept account. Like, who could possibly stand before you? Well, like, if my standing was on my account, like, who could possibly stand before God? But where is my standing? In Romans 5, 2, I stand in grace before God. That's how I stand. Because it says, but there is forgiveness with you, God. You might as be fear. And the word is fear. It's not trust like it's translated in other places. It's fear. Like, it's amazing. Like that king, right? Like, I like a man who could forgive such a huge debt. Like, whoa. Like, that's huge. How can you like do this? It says fear. There's forgiveness with you, Lord, that you may be fear. Like in another sense, <coughs> not taken lightly. Like this huge debt. And it's like the wicked servant, he just went out, no change of heart. Like that's like I marvel at that. He goes out, and that's kind of like the point. This guy, he gets it, it shows a story very, very easy for us to read. Shows a story. The guy goes out. No change of heart whatsoever. Goes out. Leaves. Nothing changed in this guy. And that's like, are you kidding me, dude? Like, you want to take the guy, and, are you kidding me? No, don't do this. You want to take the guy on the story, check him, like, are you, you know, you know. Like, nothing. 
Like here, the, the Lord gave him this huge and it's grand. Like it's like it was nothing, right? Like there's forgiveness. Like he didn't he didn't fear God. He didn't have this reverence, didn't even care. Like it was just nothing, you know. He did it with wickedness instead of forgiveness. Um 1 Corinthians 13, 7, love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in uh, truth. Uh, there's truth about people that's important. What's the truth about people, <coughs> about believers with whom we have to deal? It's that they've been forgiven by God. They've been redeemed by God. They've been cleansed and prepared as a bride. Spotless. What's the truth? about individuals. Love rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in truth about a people. And what's the truth about brethren? They've been forgiven. They've been paid for. They've been redeemed. That's the truth I rejoice in. That's the truth I exalt toward believers, right? I could exalt the iniquity, right? And that's a very wicked thing. That's not love. I could exalt the iniquity, and then I would operate toward that person according to that way. Or I could exalt the truth, which is not bean counting, but it's actually compassion and love and big forgiveness. That big, huge forgiveness. Like, you imagine God just like wiping out the sins of all humanity in one moment on the cross. Just wipe it. Like, Years like the 6,000 years of sin, just wiping it out through the sacrifice of his son. Just, you know, just this massive sweeping hand, blotting it out, like the, it says in, um, in, 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 in Colossians 2 uh, 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was con that is against us, which was contrary to us, took it out of the way. Nailed it to the cross. It's a leaf thing, the mercy that blots out sin. It just, just you imagine like this blotting out where there's no remembrance of it anymore from the cross. And he's just the, he's, the sins of humanity. Like in the first John 2 2, all sin, like he just this amazing sweeping just heart of God and just blots out all. And he knows them all too. It just he just blots it out. And like this huge heart of God. Like toward people. Like, like we, we barely know it. I mean, believer. Like we barely know it. I mean, to forgive every man. Like against him. And against other like there are sins I commit against him. And then sins I commit against other people. Right? And just it's like incredible, this huge forgiveness, like the debt that couldn't be paid. And he just simply, you know what? Just got the wiped out. Don't, worry, don't even worry about it. Go free. It's incredible. Uh, this forgiveness. But may God scale us in there.
Bless the food of Christ's name. And we ask in Christ's name. 